Keith McGowan here, the Outboard Dad, here to help you have a better boating experience. Today, we're going to continue on with our Mercury 2.5. This is a fun part because all the machining is done. Now we just have to make sure everything is clean and we have our parts lined up on a nice clean rags on our bench. We want to have no little pieces of grit, no dirt or anything to get into this engine. Uh, so that's what we're going to continue on with today, starting with cleaning. So please like, subscribe and send me any comments that you have. So what I did was went on Amazon. This is just degreaser spray. This is from Rector Seal. It's one of the ones I like. You can use the uh, brake cleaner as well. I was just out of it and this was available, so I got it. I'll probably get some brake clean as well. But notice the top of this is different, right? It's the same as the top of this so that I can put these nozzles on. So these nozzles I purchase on Amazon. And what's cool, I'll show you, is if you look closely at the end of this, it has multiple little holes in it. And I can get this in my ports and spray out while holding the can upright and spray out any other little grit that's in there. You'd be surprised, even though we did all that blast of pressure washing, we're gonna, here, I'll spray this over here real quick. Right, so you can see it comes out all different angles. Got some on my phone here. <laughs> Hope that doesn't eat away at the screen. Hold on, you got something on you. We're good. <laughs> anyway, so I'm gonna get this in all the ports and I'm gonna blast them all out. And then I'm gonna look at my rag here at the bottom and we're gonna see how much crap actually comes out of it. And we're gonna keep doing that, usually only once or twice, until we make sure there's nothing left on the rag so there's no little grit left. So let's make sure this is nice and clean. Then we're gonna look at our crankshaft and our bearings and get the crankshaft and bearings set up here first. And then we'll do pistons one by one, start to install. Also, I'm gonna mix up. I have to go out tomorrow and get some white lithium grease. I already have some Shell Rotella oil that we talked about in the past to use that 15W40 because it has the highest content of zinc and phosphorus. Essentially, it's braking oil. And that's what we're gonna use here to build this motor as a builder's grease. So let's get started on cleaning this out. Make sure you have your safety glasses on. So I'm gonna get inside these ports. So let's take a quick look, see where we're at. So I'm just gonna lift the block up really quick here so you can see how much actually comes out of this. After we pressure washed, yuck. So we had a lot of stuff in there that has to come out. Now, a lot of it is stained because it's dirty, but that's all little pieces of grit. So we're gonna continue cleaning this out the rest of the way, and then we'll get cleaner rags on here again on our bench and spray it one more time to make sure we got all of it out and probably should wear some gloves. I'm gonna put some rubber gloves on because this degreaser kind of dries out your hands and we'll make sure we get this nice and clean and get ready for the crankshaft. So now I sprayed out the block really good and now we see there's some stains there, but there's no grit left over. So I went through it two or three times. Again, with my little nozzle, I used a little brake cleaner too. Different solvents that I like to use. Brake cleaner usually works well. Got, was able to fish this down into all those intake ports so that this way all of that grit and everything is flushed out. I went through the exhaust ports. I also went from the other side and flushed it all out. Yes, you could do this in a parts washer as well, but even in the parts washer, you can't get the nozzle in there to spray upward, and that's where these come in very handy. So next, we've got it all clean and dried out. Now we've taken all of that sea foam that we put in there that was on the cylinders off. So now our cylinder walls are dry. We don't want to get a flash rust. But now that we know we're nice and clean, first thing we're going to do is mix up our concoction that the... Uh, machine shop guy taught me to do actually a couple guys that I've learned this from is using Shell Rotella 15W40 diesel oil and what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up a little builders lube for our motor I'm gonna clean off a screwdriver really good now if you notice I've covered my bench with clean rags I have some cheap ones here that I buy. And then I have a couple of rags here that I'm using. My little hammer is here, which I sprayed off because I'm gonna use that to tap out my 
wrist pins for my connecting rods. So now that this is nice and clean, we're gonna take some white lithium lube. They didn't have it in the tub, so I had to get it this way. And we're gonna scoop some out of here and get it right in our mix. My friend Melissa Butler would like this because she is a pastry chef, so she works with stuff like this all the time. Although it's not as toxic as this stuff is. Uh, her husband's an awesome, gonna be an awesome electrician too. He has some really cool videos. Phil, Philip Butler, you should check him out. So we're gonna mix up some of this first. Put the cap back on. I wanna make sure everything stays clean and dust free. And I'm gonna coat my cylinder walls with this con concoction first. And then I'll get the crankshaft over here and we will get the bearings taken care of. We're gonna inspect them a little bit further. Should be nice and clean because we just removed it from the block not too long ago, just a couple weeks ago. And I also wrapped them up in a nice clean rag to be sure that we didn't get any dust or dirt or anything, especially while I was boring and honing here. So we'll go ahead and take some of this, put it right in our cylinders. We're, I'm gonna coat my cylinder walls with this. And it's gonna do a couple things because of the white lithium, it's gonna hold the oil. So now I'm gonna get a good content of zinc and phosphorus on my cylinder walls throughout. Make sure I get all the way down to the bottom. Now some of it will end up in the ports and this is gonna smoke off when we first fire up the engine. But this is what's gonna keep us lubricated really well. And I want to make sure I coat the whole cylinder. I don't want any flash rust happening because I'm not going to uh, be here every day. Got some other stuff to do. So, and I'm also going to cover this with a nice clean rag, new fresh rag as well. Also, the other thing we did was these little bleeder tubes, sprayed them out, made sure there was no grit left inside there. Also, we want those to work function properly when we fire this up so that we have good oil flow. So everything looks nice and coated very well. I'm gonna cover this up so it doesn't get any dust in it. I'm trying to keep everything as clean as possible. Let's get out that crankshaft and see what it looks like. So now that our block is nice and clean, and now we have our mix made up with our white lithium and shell rotella. I only mix a little bit at a time because I find if I leave it sitting, the container gets all dirty. I just get a new container. This is just, you know, painting cups. You know, you buy them on Amazon, buy the 50 or whatever. And this way, if I, if I save it in a small quantity, I use it when I use it and then I just get rid of it or I use it for other things, just minor lubrication for cables or something. I like to have a new fresh one because if I let it sit here in my shop, the container gets dirty and I'm sticking my hands in there. I don't want any dirt or anything getting in there. So we have really good bearings on this machine, but the, in the kit, they do send us two new center bearings, new end bearings as well. I like to save the end bearings. I like to save the center ones too, usually. But the guy said this did have a knock. We're assuming it was from the piston, uh, the two pistons that were causing that problem. When we spun the crankshaft after we took all the connecting rods off of it, it spun freely. There wasn't any problems. So usually I don't go ahead and change that. But on this one, since they gave us the new center bearings, I'm going to go ahead and see what they look like and if they're different and see how they fit. And again, we're going to lube all of these bearings with my shell Rotella even though this still has some two-stroke oil in it. And one more thing that I forgot to mention, we do have these rings here that keep the compression between the cylinders. And each one of these rings also can wear. So if you look at this ring here, I'll point to it. You can see on the side, sometimes it'll create a lip at the top that it gets worn out. And if it gets too far worn out, it's not gonna seal very well. None of these have a lip on them at all. So I checked each one of them. What you wanna do before you place it into the block is you wanna make sure that all of the gaps are at the top. We also, if you remember, we inspected our gear here that runs our uh, two-stroke oil pump. 
and it is in great condition. There's nothing wrong with it. There's no chips or cracks or anything in it. So let's take a closer look at these bearings and see if we decide to replace them. So they do have a little clip, a metal clip that goes around them. Don't know if you remember that from the video when we disassembled this. So we're just gonna go ahead and push that. The kind of the race on the outside is split in two different pieces. And then it has a centering hole where it centers on a pin when you drop it in the block. So let's pull that off. And let's just compare to what a new bearing looks like. Again, I want to put these down the same way that they came off. So that we put it back the same exact way. Take my ring off that holds it in place. So this ring just snaps around the two halves. Let's see what a new one looks like. So these are Pro Marine bearings. I've had good success with their bearings. So we can go ahead and use a new one here. We have the clip on it, nice and shiny as well. So I'm also keeping the old one next to it in the same position that it came out so I don't forget which way this goes together. Because there is a pin that drops in this hole when it drops on the block and we'll show you how those line up when we drop the crankshaft in. So let's go ahead and lubricate this up. Uh, it does come together. I'm gonna go ahead and use the new bearings. Came with the kit and new ring around it. I'm gonna go ahead first and get some lube on these bearings. I wanna work it into the bearing really well. These are new dry bearings. So I wanna be sure we get a good amount of lube inside there that has the shell rotella mixed into it. Because that's the stuff with the higher zinc and phosphorus. Put some on the inside as well. Put some on our shaft. If I have excess, I'm gonna put it on this gear. So I wanna have a good lube on the gear. So we'll put this in place. White lithium also helps it hold in place. Gonna make sure we get a good amount on the inside of the races here. And then we have a new clip that goes over top on the center slot and that aligns our races together. Spin it around a couple times, get that lube mixed in there. Same thing with the other one. One of the things you can notice if you take apart a motor and you wanna see if it was rebuilt before, is if you look closely at the two halves here, the way it's kind of an angled cut, it's actually broken. And we're gonna save the old ones. When we look at our new ones, yeah, it has a little bit of an angle to it, but it's almost perfectly straight. So it's one of the ways you can tell if a motor's been rebuilt or not by how those split cases look. We're gonna put this bearing on, lube it up, then we're gonna put some lube on the bottom bearing because it's easier when it's outside of the motor to put it in there. Try and get some inside the ball bearings there. We'll show you that. Then we're gonna drop this crank down into place and get it lined up with the holes. That's a little tricky sometimes, but you can work it in. You have to feel for it a little bit. And then we're gonna start putting our pistons together and one by one put our pistons in. But first thing we have to do is do our ring gaps. So let's Get this crank ready, get it in there, and then we can put our ring gaps in and start gapping all of our rings to make sure they're all right. So we have the bottom bearing here. We can look to where it's the seal rides. I'm gonna put a little grease on that as well, but we're gonna push some, some of this white lithium and push it into these bearings and spin it around a few times to make sure this is well lubed before we put it in. So we're all lubed up. Our cylinders are lubed up. Our, all of our bearings are lubed up. We got our new bearings in. I tried to point the holes in the bearing that need to line up with the block pins towards the bottom as best we can. We're gonna have to get it in there and kind of feel that. I also put lube around all my rings, my ceiling rings here, and make sure I turn them so the gaps are up for all of them. 
I did rotate them around a little bit while I was getting lube in there. Uh, you don't have to go too crazy with that, but you do want to have make sure you have lube in there so that nothing is dry when it first kicks over before the oil injection system gets a chance to really pump some oil through. And now we're ready to drop it in. So what I'm doing now is I'm kind of rotating, I'm lifting up a little bit so I can feel that pin on the bottom. I'm just rotating it back and forth until I get it lined up with the hole. I'll feel it kind of lock. As soon as you get it rotated, you, you can feel the spot and you push down a little bit and you can feel the crank go down a little bit. All the sealing rings now are lining up. Push them down into place. So now this should spin freely. And it does. So each time we take a next step and add something to this, which is going to be the pistons with the rods in them, we're going to start going through them one by one with the ring gaps next. We want to spin that crankshaft to make sure it's spinning freely each time and nothing binds. If something's binding, then you have to stop and try and figure out, hey, I put this one piston in, it's binding somewhere. So it shouldn't because we test fit all the pistons to make sure they go up and down freely, make sure that our bores were straight and honed properly. So everything should go together one by one. Now we're gonna get our pistons out, so that'll be in the next episode. So please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have, and let me know what motor you're ready to rebuild, and we'll talk about how we can help you have a better boating experience. Have a great day.